today uh, we're going to talk about a uh, geo mapping uh, one of the new functionalities in Pentaho 4.5 and uh, before going any further I would like to introduce uh, this website uh, this part of our wiki where we have useful information about how to implement a uh, geo mapping so the first thing before getting into geo mapping is what type of problem we want to address. So geo mapping or solve for problems when we need information about a certain metrics uh, that are attached to geographical location of a subject. So for example, if we want to know a uh, cells per territory, uh, that's the Geo mapping will help us to quickly spot which uh, which areas, which geographical areas are are doing well in relation to others. Uh, also, geo mapping might help us to to find a uh, which stores are doing better than others. And uh, geo mapping also may may be useful in case we want to do. Uh, demand maps or opportunity maps uh, in certain areas and we want to drill down into that. Uh, in, this presentation, in this webinar today, uh, I'm going to start uh, introducing the different steps to implement geo mapping and then I'm going to go to the basic example provided by Pentaho, the steel wheels cube and then, based on the steel wheels cube, we're going to create a new cube uh, for employee location. So we, so to start with, let's, let's, let's go through the description of what we have to do to enable geo mapping. There are three steps that need to be followed in order to have geo mapping enabled. So first, we must have the data. We must, we must, uh, Pentaho has an engine where it can identify different uh, location levels. For example, we may have country, we may have state, and we may have city. Also, after defining this, we need to, our second step is to make sure that our model schema has a flag that may allow analyzer to say, oh, this is a this is a geolocation dimension, or this is a geolo this is a geolocation level within this hierarchy. Uh, we do that by adding annotation to the levels within the Mondrian hierarchies. Uh, another, and the last step uh, is to define the, it's just to go and do the drag and dropping and making sure that if all the annotation follows the rules uh, specified in Analyzer. So for example, we have this country here, which is just the it's gonna be more clear. We want to see the workbench. So this is we're gonna start playing with the steel wheels cube. So if we go to the customers, we're gonna see that we have markets. So if we go to markets, we have territory, country, and state. So we're gonna look into country. So we need to make sure that in data.role we have geography defined and at the same time in the geo role and geo role annotation we are gonna define the geographical level at which this level exists. So for example this is country, this is gonna be at the country level. This one is a sub province, so we are expecting to be at a state level. Another particular 
annotation that is worth adding is the required parents. So for example, we, we cannot have a state without having a country. So we have to add a country in order to have a state. And after country, we have city. And conversely, we cannot have a, a city without having a country or having a state. So after we define the hierarchy, we just minimize, just collapse this, and then we have this pretty much ready to be looked at. And the city rules is a very basic cells cube uh, provided by default in Pentaho. Uh, I tweaked it a little bit. What I did is I it was initially uh, the data was initially stored in uh, uh, HSQL and hypersonic and then I just moved it to MySQL so I could have a little bit more flexibility. And uh, now I'm going to test this cube, the city rule cell, the one that comes with the top. So here I'm going to publish it in my local environment. Publish it here. Successful. I'm going to open the script box. Load it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a new analysis, a new analyzer report with the still rule, still rule cells cube. This is something that we can do with our installation out of the box. So, the first step was we are looking at our geo mapping and uh, our analyzer report we we need to switch it to the geomap geomapping tool. So we're just hitting this icon and then we click here on geomap. Uh, after the analyzer report is open, uh, I have four options. One is geography, which is specifically related to the geographical location of the of the metric I'm planning to analyze. Uh, followed by is uh, how the metric is gonna, the metric is going to be differentiated by the number and the different and the color scheme which is defined here on the bottom in the colors uh, and we also have a, a size which is uh, the option to make our marker bigger or smaller based on the amount that exists here in this cube. So let's get started with the basic plan. Let's go to country, let's over here to geography, and let's hit cells. So this is our world view of cells. In our color, color scheme, we have that we have a red, yellow, green, where the higher cells are are colored in green. So, for example, this one, which is green, is the highest. Those that are yellow are in the middle, like Spain and France. Okay, this one is three million. This one is one, one point one, and the one that stands the low range of cells are in red. Finland, Norway, Japan, Australia is a little bit you know, yellow and red, orange. So that's the way it works. Another option we got here is to use the size. So we might say, okay, color represents how much I saw I want to see how many cells I did per location. So 
I can use this quantity matrix to give me that value, but I can I can represent this in a different way by the size of the marker. So adding this is gonna show me where did I report most of my cells by number of cell number of transactions. So I have USA, which is the maximum number of transactions here, followed by Spain and France, and then Australia. You, the tool mapping plugin analyzer also has uh, the option of dealing with the marker. So for example, if I go to US and I double click here, I'm gonna have the option to go and see what is gonna be the performance per state according to my according to my to the predefined hierarchy. So as we saw before, I defined here a hierarchy where we got country state. So by double clicking it's gonna bring you one level down in the hierarchy. So I can see here my most of my cells are in a California and I probably might need to improve a little bit in one of these. Share New Jersey. Alright, so this is a, a basic example about dealing through and how to display a geographical a matrix. Now, I am going to show how to add a custom locations. So for custom locations, I am going to explain the structure of the employees table in our steel wheels database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to set the problem before going any further. The problem I'm planning to solve is I want to know where my employees live for some reason. Probably I want to relocate close to my employees or I want to know that information. I want to keep track of where my employees exist when they live. So to do that, I, I add three, col three columns to the employees table in the steel wheel database. And the first column is location. The second column is latitude, employee latitude, which is Floyd. And the third one is an employee longitude, which is the number of floats. After that, I got some of my employees and I add the location based the location name and the latitude and longitude. So let's see. Uh, after that I created my employee queue, which is steel wheels employee. I have here my employee location uh, level. The important thing here is to define in our location level uh, two properties. One property is going to be latitude, which is going to be related to the current employee latitude, and a property called longitude, which is going to be related to the employee longitude. And of course, we have to define the data role as geography and the geo role as simply location. We are not going to define it. Location. And additionally, I want to know uh, the position, the job, the position of my employee. So I just created this new dimension, which belongs to the same hierarchy, but it's going to be the position, the job title of this employee. So let me go out of this. And now I am going to copy the new analyzer report and I'm going to open my steel wheel employee. So 
press this i'm going to switch to here map and here this location information is going to um, this is going to simulate like my location as before like country i have state now this location is going to simulate this piece of geolocation data so i just need to drag and drop it here the geography and the time the number of the number of the number of employees so i can see here by color that most of my employees maybe here in randwick some of them are in blue and only a few are in here in Hanoi or in Bombay. However, this map as it is, is really hard to read. So I believe it will be much readable if I use it by size. So I can define cluster people here. So I have first class the main cluster here in Randwick and second cluster here in Krasnodar. And city, city. Now let's assume that I am interested just only in sales representative. I want to know where my sales representative live. So when I just click here to expand the filters option, and I am just going to track the employee position, and I'm going to just click here in sales representative, and then. And I can see that the majority of my sales representative live in Randwick. Let's do bigger. Yes. All right. So now that we have this, uh, we can always come back to the switch to table format and see. What are we really working on? Uh, something really important to know is we have two different color schemes here. So we have the red, yellow, we have the blue one, which doesn't look good, doesn't look it's not easy to distinguish. The gray one, no, definitely red one is, is the one that we. Uh, that is everything I have at the moment for uh, geomapping. This is the basics of what we can do with geomapping. Uh, something that I forgot to mention that is worth saying is all the geomapping information is located in via server. Solution system from Tahoe here. And the most important part is the data directory. Here, for example, is where we store the information about where the data is. So we have country, this is for Australia, the state, the municipality, and the latitude and longitude. So in case we want to edit or fix this, all of this data is imported using this PDR transformation. I think that's everything I have for today. Thank you for attending and hope to see you the next time.